We had a problem. Our 10-boat field coming from Evansville was reduced to nine when Greg Hawk and the U-100 got airborne in turn one yesterday, Saturday morning, did a very violent flip, destroyed the left side of the boat, and took him out of the competition. You're looking at it here. It's what we call your basic apex blowover. The right side of the sponson, the right side of the boat comes up at the apex of the turn, lifts eventually the entire boat out of the water. Once the rudder and skid fin go, he's a passenger on a wild ride. I did have a word with Greg when he came back to the pits, thankfully, in decent shape. Yeah, the boat uh, didn't, didn't like the waves on the river, I guess, you know. Uh, we're tr turning a good qualifying time and just went into the turn, turned the wheel a little bit and that right sponsor pops up and, and then it popped up again, went even higher and, and it just ended up upside down. It just picked up too high too quick, you know. And, uh, it feels like you're on an elevator going to the top floor real quick, you know. It's just uh, nothing you can do about it at that stage except for hope for the best. Did you have a lot of wing in it? Not as much wing as the boat had. Oh, we're you know? good at the start as Vilwak in the Miss Buckweiser showed her stripes early, stepping out high and fancy through the first couple of laps, opening uh, at 146 miles an hour the first time through, following that at 143 the second lap around. That built an insurmountable lead for him. Bellows Pizza followed in step, second place all the way, while Steve David first tried the inside line, then swung wide trying to track him down from the outside to no avail. Bud easily home in first under the O'Doul's eye in the sky helicam with Bellows Pizza, the U9 in second, and oh boy, oh boy, everything third. possible went wrong for Mark Evans in the Lumar window film. First of all, he was late leaving the dock, and that meant that when Evans got onto the backstretch, just over a minute remained before the start of the race. He decided to slow way down and try not to pass the score up boy before the one minute mark. He got the nose of the boat, about half a sponson past that boy too early and was penalized a lap. Now, at the start, the other two boats, Mitch Evans in the master tire and Terry Troxell in the Miss Grand West, jumped the gun. This meant that had Mark Evans not gotten in trouble a minute earlier, he would have been the leader. But it meant that everybody was penalized, everybody was equal, and Mitch Evans then made the rest of the story a non-story by cruising to a fairly easy victory in the master tire. However, for Terry Troxell and his brand new U2 Miss Trend West, easily the most impressive that brand new boat has looked so far. With everybody penalized, Mark Evans still finished a distant third, a disappointing start to his day in the Lumar window film. So the points scored in Heat 1B, 40 points for a first place for Mitch Evans in the U3 Master Tire, second place, 30 points to Terry Troxell in the U2 Miss Trend West, and 23 points to Mark Evans in the U8 Lumar window film. The story of Heat 1C, sponsored by American Legion Post Number 9, is the story of a rough river, perhaps like never before. Three boats, U10, U16, and U25, were pitched in every direction possible from the first warm-up lap to the end. It was certainly uncomfortable. It was definitely dangerous, perhaps more than ever before. Mike Weber and Miss Emcor nursed his mount home with the win and his precious 40 points, while Nate Brown weathered a terrific pounding on his way to second. Dr. Ken Muscatel's Mr. Home Loan stayed up and running as well for third place and 23 points. At the dock, the principals were a bit shaken. Two ways, sponsored by the Belterra Casino just up the river. Some interesting events in this one as well. It was set to be a shootout for lanes, no lanes assigned. The participants were Dave Vilwalk and Miss Budweiser, Mitch Evans in the Master Tire, and Mike Weber in the U10 Miss Emcor. With no lanes assigned, Mike Weber won the battle. He had the inside in the M4, made a perfect start, as did Mitch Evans, way on the outside in the master tire. Bill Walk and the Budweiser appeared to be very late at the start and were a distant third as the boats ended up the backstretch for the first time. Eventually, Evans would put a big lead on the M4, then would have engine problems and settle into the water under the Milton Bridge. So the race at that point between the M4 and the Budweiser and Dave Vilwalk would motor by the U10 in the red boat for the victory. Problems for Mitch Evans, a victory for Dave Vilwalk. Chris McClure met the winner at his dock. Let's take it sequentially, the start. You got left back there a little bit. What happened? <laughs> well... I think that was a pretty questionable call, and the other guys were about a half a boat length over. They called it a good start, but they were about a half a boat length over, and so I backed off to let them go, thought that the race was really over at that point, and, uh, but they said no, it was a good start, so 
then I had to sort of pick my way through, and luckily um, the U3 had some troubles, and that put us up front. But you caught the U10, and you did that with both positioning and horsepower. That was a good boat race for a lap and a half there. Yeah, we had to work around. We, I was hoping they'd you know, make a couple of mistakes there, and it worked out for us. The Budweiser scoreboard for Heat 2A gives 40 points to Miss Budweiser and Dave Vilwatch. 30 points for another good, strong run by Mike Weber in the U10 M Corps. Disappointing DNF. No points scored by Mitch Evans and the U3 Master Tire. Heat 2B, the Larry Meter and Lewis Ford Memorial Heat, saw three boats that finished second in their earlier runs head to head for the first time today. Mike Hansen in U9 showed nice shoot speed at the start, trying to pick up ground from the outside, and by the exit pin of turn one was side by side with Trent West and Miss Elam Plus. The subsequent drag race down the straightaway went to Terry Troxel in U2, a show of speed and handling no one had ever seen from that brand new hull. He won the race to the second corner and every corner thereafter. U9 did catch up through the drag race eventually, regrouped enough to track down U16 and capture second in the heat. Three boats drawn in the Heat 2C. They were the U8 Lumar window film, Mark Evans' brand new ride, the U6 Oboy Oberto, the locally owned boat here from Madison, Steve David the driver, and the U25 Mr. Home Loan, Ken Muscatel. But once again, drama before the boats went onto the water. Something wrong aboard the Oboy Oberto. The local boat never did leave the dock, so it did not start for Steve David and the Oboy Oberto. That left Dr. Ken Muscatel and the U25 to race with Mark Evans and the U8 Lumar. That turned out about the way you thought it would. But in the end, an easy 40 points, and they needed them for Mark Evans and the Lumar window film team. The U2, Trent West, seemed to have the inside lane established for the start. He was washed down and suddenly sitting still on the water. U16, Nate Brown, and the Bud touched hull, perhaps helping lead to the wash down of U2 in the first place. But Bud ran five laps instead of four. Trent West got restarted and eventually was able to finish, but the question was, where? Miss Bud was asked to run an extra lap, apparently giving the win to U8, but only after Nate Brown's boat coasted to a stop after a couple of laps, while Troxel ran down the dock to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Dave Vilwak right after it was finished. And Steve Montgomery spoke well, there's a little confusion that. on the dock, but we'll try and sort it out here. Just what went on out there? Well, Bill Vilvoc pulled his own stupid tricks. You know, I had lane one. You're supposed to establish your lane at the markup pin, which I did. And then about, oh, I don't know, a third of the way up to the corner, he just infringes in my lane, puts my fire out, and then goes back and thinks he's going to get away with it. You know, it's dirty, but it's Dave. You know, we, we're almost coming accustomed to it. But I had to, after the race was over, I had to go at least, you know, tell him that I did understand how we're going to race the rest of the day. So with the results of Heat 3A still a little unsettled, we put the field in the water for Heat 3B. It was to be a four-boat field, but once again, the U6 Oboy Alberta with problems. This time didn't even come off the trailer. Their day may be finished. They may be waiting for the consolation. Three boats answered the gun. The U10, Mike Weber in the M Corps having a pretty good day. The U9, Mike Hansen and the Bellows Pizza. And they were joined on the water by the U25, Dr. Ken Muscatel in the Mr. Home Loan. Things appeared to go pretty much the way of the M Corps and Mike Weber. A good start, an early lead, and eventually what appeared to be a substantial lead over Mike Hansen and the U9. However, when Weber came into the inside in turn two and Hansen got into his rooster tail, the officials ruled, at least preliminarily, that he did not have the seven-boat overlap necessary. Mike Weber was penalized a lap. Hansen was awarded the victory, and the discussion was on once again. We talked to Mike Hansen, the apparent winner, who's with Chris McClure. 30, 30, 40. That's a good day's work leading into a final. Uh, I think that'll put us in the final in the front row, and that was the whole key the whole day was to get in the front row. Cause you can't win if you're in the back, so uh, that gives us a shot. Well, Mike Weber, it's your turn in the witness stand. Did you encroach? I had 10 boat lengths, and I'll tell you what, it gets really frustrating because, you know, last year, I got put upside down, no call. I got screwed in San Diego, no call. I had 10 boat lengths, there's no doubt in my mind. I saw it in my mirrors. I, I wouldn't have, there's no reason to come in if I didn't have the boat lengths because I had them covered. And it's just bull, that's all it is. But there was more to the story. Right after we talked to what we thought was the winner, the penalty on Mike Weber was rescinded. That meant he got back 10 points and that would be a very big factor because it put him, in fact, in the front row of the final.